Hello everybody. I haven't duplicated a camera type before and I haven't done a request before but someone asked me for basically a tutorial on actually using this instead of just kind of listing the specs and the history and then showing some results that I was able to get. So I'm going to run through the Maxim 7000 uh, kind of a care and feeding and use of video. I'll probably do this in a few chunks. So the reading glasses for up close work when I'm working with the camera, the clothing, the time of day, they're going to change. So I'll piece this together uh, over this next weekend and we'll see what we can get. So first, if you're shooting with one of these, um, unless you've already verified that it works, it was probably in a closet, you bought it used. So there's a few things uh, you'll need to run through. A biggie, this big silver button right here is the lens release. Press and hold that, turn counterclockwise as you're looking at it from the front of the camera. And you take off the lens. It's a good idea to take a look at the mirror, make sure it's fairly clean, no crud on the back of the lens. So then you line up the red dot on the lens with the red dot here. Give it a turn clockwise as you're looking at the front of the camera until it clicks. Boom, the lens is on. Next, you're going to need to know that your batteries are good. With the standard grip like this, four AAA batteries. So I'll show you how to do that. Take a coin and this big thumb screw on the side. Once you've got it loose, it's got kind of knurled surface, so it's pretty easy to get off. And then you've got this uh, funky setup here. These are the batteries when I originally did the test in this camera. It's a different camera than I did for the 52 cameras project. And they're a little bit weird to get out. The first two come out pretty easily, but then you have to rotate the battery holder to get to a couple of them. There we go. They're pretty clearly marked, um, but it's embossed on the plastic. So you want to be real careful that you get the polarity correct. The easiest way to remember is that the big spring is on the negative side, the flat side of the battery. If you do need to replace the interior battery, it's pretty straightforward. There's six screws on this metal plate underneath the main power battery. You take it out. It's a CR2016. You put it back in with the plus facing in. Put this plate back on. There are wires at the bottom, so be careful you don't just yank this thing off. Make sure that it's clicked back to where it's kind of at a right angle. Just put it back on there. Tighten the thumb screw. And you can see the LCD says program at the top. So we've got juice now. When you're ready to load film, on the left side of the camera, there's this little gray button. You push that in, slide this down, it pops the back open. Got some slightly expired uh, Ilford Pan F. It's only ISO 50, so I'll have to take care that I have sufficient light or use the flash. Load it into the left side film compartment. And then you take the leader out just past this red mark inside the uh, take-up chamber. You want to make sure that the sprocket holes are catching these bottom teeth on the take-up sprocket. Hopefully you can get it to lay flat. And then you close the back. And I don't have it on. You can hear it. It always does the choo -choo 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 -choo, does that four times. You know it loaded properly if the film counter on the LCD advances to one. So now this bad boy is in program auto exposure mode with the film loaded. It's got good batteries in it and it's ready to rock. I'll uh, 
wait for tomorrow in daylight and we'll run through some of the steps of actually using the beast now that it's prepped.